taking a break from our study in John for three weeks to talk about families. And in case you missed it, that was a set of wedding photos from pastors and staff and oh my. <laughs> wow. Just for the record, that is a three-piece powder blue polyester <laughs> leisure suit. I burned it thereafter. <laughs> the cool part of that picture is she still weighs the same as she did then. Mary has recently lost 51 pounds. And let me tell you, that'll put the zip back in your doodah. Yeah. That's a pretty cool thing. Wow. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on. I don't even know what to do with that. We're taking a break from our study of John to do a family series. We do this every fall. And this one is called family mission. And it's got this idea behind it. Write this in your notes, wherever you are, any of our locations. You got notes today online. You can pull them up as well. Family is our first mission. Family is our first mission. When God made us male and female and put us there in the garden, we had church. I mean, my definition of church is two people gathered together with God in their midst. That was church. He literally created the home before he instituted the church. It is his primary mission. It is his priority. We begin at home. So write that in your notes as well. Following Jesus starts at home. The folks at home know if we're the real deal or not. The folks at home know whether we're following Jesus or whether we are faking it. So we're going to spend three weeks on family mission. And we're going to talk today about marriage, next week about parenting, and that third week about extended family, about caring for kids that are not our own. We can live on mission three ways. First, in our marriages, write a number down, 80 9%. Here's what it means. 89% of Americans will be married at some point in their lives. Now, every time we teach on marriage, even though it's usually just once or twice a year, some well-meaning single person emails me and says, what about us? Dude, 89%. 89% of people are going to be married at some point in life. That's a pretty universal kind of thing. So we want to learn how to honor Jesus in our marriages. Secondly, we want to honor Jesus with our kids. That's where we raise our legacy. The number to write down, 92%. 92% of Americans will be a parent at some time in their lives. How many of you are parents? Yeah. How many of you don't want to admit it? Yeah, it's a challenging deal. So next week, we're going to talk about raising our legacy. What do you do with the kids? And then third number I want you to write down is the other kids we influence. And I want you to write in the number 100%. All of us, whether we're married, whether we're parents or not, have the opportunity to foster kids, to adopt kids, to sponsor kids, to be grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and extended family to the kids that are around us. We are Westside Family Church. Our mission is the family. It is the first mission for every Christ follower. So that's where we're headed. Today, we're going to talk about starting our legacy, building a marriage that honors God. Write this in your notes. Most marriages operate in survival mode. Survival mode. Let's just get through. Let's just survive. Let's just figure out how to hang in there. And that's a good thing, and sometimes that is all there is. Because marriage is the most wonderful, awful thing in the whole world. When it's great, there's nothing better. When it's a heartache, there's no heartache that is worse. Sometimes we're survival mode with occasional flashes of success mode. Write that in your notes. Occasional flashes of success. It'll be like, wow, we haven't had a fight in two weeks. Or like, wow, the kids are actually behaving. Or wow, we were able to pay the bills. Or wow, this is actually kind of fun. We live in survival mode. We occasionally see success mode. But I believe God has something totally beyond both of those. He wants to teach us to live in significance mode. 
I'm not after survival. I'm not after success. I want to have significance. God's plan for the marriage is he wants to use your relationship with your spouse to display his love, his joy, and his character to everyone who knows you. He wants to show off in your marriage. That is significance mode. So I want us to read together a passage of Scripture today from Ephesians 5. I will tell you that my least favorite verse in the Bible is in this passage. Now, I know you're always saying, Dan, every verse you teach is your favorite verse. Uh Uh-uh. My least favorite verse is in here. See if you can pick it out. Ephesians 5 from verses 22 to 31. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The husband must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Everybody look this way. I believe there are three key submissions in a marriage that moves into significance mode. I believe there are three surrenders, if you will, three commitments, if you will, that we have to make if we want to see a legacy started in our marriage. Not a legacy of survival, not a legacy of success, a legacy of significance. Here's the first one. Submit to Jesus. Submit to Jesus. This is where it starts. So many times in my life I've heard pastors or Bible teachers address the role and the submission thing for husband and wife out of Ephesians 5. But they always start in verse 22. They leave out the first 21 verses. Why? The first 21 verses are the place where it says submit your life to Jesus, surrender to him, commit to him, have a spiritual dimension of your life. In fact, Ephesians 5 is all about following Jesus. Write that in your notes. And it describes it for us. If you want a description of what it looks like to follow Jesus, it's in these 20 verses. Here's a few of the phrases from that passage. Follow God's example. That's always a good thing to do in our marriages. Sacrifice to God. Yeah, you're going to sacrifice in your marriage as well. Live as children of light. Do what pleases the Lord. That's the goal. Be very careful how you live. Understand what God's will is. Be filled with the Spirit. All these instructions are in these first 20 Verses. Now, I want to give you a diagram. It's in your notes. That is not a crystal. It's not a pyramid. Don't email me. It's a triangle, okay? It's a triangle, and I want you to fill it in. I want you to put God at the top of the triangle in your notes. Can you do that? Put husband at the bottom left and wife at the bottom right. Many times in marriage, we think it's a two dimensional relationship. Husband and wife, wife back to husband. But this is one of the reasons we follow Christ. This is one of the reasons we consider his claims and we go after him. There's a third dimension in marriage. It is the God factor. Scripture teaches he wants to partner with you in your marriage. P.S. He's not a silent partner. He's a majority partner. He will speak up. He already have. That's why we study this book. He's already spoken to us. So here's the idea. Look this way. Don't worry about writing it in yet. Just watch. You got husband and you got wife. And they're drawing closer to God. And the more they go after God and include him in the relationship, what else happens? They're getting closer to each other. This is the third dimension. This is the God factor in a marriage. So write it in your notes. When both husband and wife get closer to Jesus, they also draw closer to each other. 
For years, Mary and I just had a two-dimensional relationship. God was there, but we didn't acknowledge him. We didn't include him. It was just us, just me and her. And then we decided, wait a minute, let's put God in the midst. Let's get closer to him. And the more we go after him, this is such a cool side benefit, the closer we are to each other. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what if I'm trying to follow Jesus, but my mate is not? That's cool. Even as you get closer to God, your strength and ability to deal with your mate is going to increase. But when both go after God, what an amazing thing's happening in a relationship. That's God's plan. Submission starts with submission to Jesus. I invite you, consider his claims, and if he is who he says he is, go after him. The first submission to make a marriage work is submit to Jesus. The second submission, the second surrender, is submit to each other. Submit to each other. Again, I'm amazed at how many pastors start with verse 22, which says, Wife, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. But they leave out verse 21. Look at verse 21 with me. It says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. There is a mutual submission in marriage. It is required. Write this in your notes. Both husband and wife must commit to do whatever it takes to make the marriage work. Whatever it takes. Two of my favorite heroes in this world are Billy Graham and his wife, Ruth Bell Graham. Mrs. Graham graduated to heaven a few years ago, but what a godly, awesome lady. She talked about how it had been a struggle in their marriage, that Billy traveled so much when the kids were young, and how they kept it together, and did an interview about five years ago, just before she graduated to heaven, where she told her story. And the interviewer looked at her and said, Mrs. Graham, did you ever consider divorce? And she looked straight into the lady's eyes and said, divorce? No, murder, yes. <laughs> this little bitty, petite, sweet, godly woman. Isn't that the truth of it? I mean, she was in it whatever it takes, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it is difficult. We submit to each other. I did a wedding last weekend in Eureka Springs. I don't do many weddings, real honestly, with the size of Westside. It's just beyond my capacity to do it. And most people want weddings on weekends, and I'm generally kind of tied up with the weekend. But uh, once in a while, I get to do one. This was a guy in my fireside group. So I did it because he was a great friend. And uh, he had the wedding, he and his bride, in Eureka Springs, which is also commonly called Eufrica. Springs, interesting place, but we were down there and I got to the point in the wedding ceremony and I always do this where I looked at him and I said, Brad, you've got to understand the commitment you're making today means after this day, the number one authority in your life after God himself is Melissa. It's not your parents. It's not your siblings, it's not your friends, it's not yourself. The number one authority in your life from this day forward is Melissa. There's a mutual submission. And then the same thing to her, Melissa. There is a submission here. The number one authority in your life is going to be bread. My wife's opinion counts more than anybody else's. It's a majority opinion. Why? I've submitted to it. And when she's asking about something or looking for wisdom, my opinion counts more than anybody else she talks to. That's called marriage. <laughs> True love. You got to go see Princess Bride. If you people don't know what that was about, get a life. Go see Princess Bride. We submit to Jesus first. That is the biggest submission. The second submission is to submit to each other. Here comes the third one, which is the one most people start with. Submit to your role. 
Submit to your role. There are specific roles in marriage. But notice, the first submission is to Jesus. You got to get that one right. The second one is to each other, whatever it takes. Got to get that right. Then the third submission that starts in verse 22 is possible. Let's look at this passage. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, here's the verse that is my least favorite in all the Bible because it is so tough. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Let's start with the husband. How did Christ love the church? The scripture says, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Most of us think, and it is correct, but there's more. He died for the church. That's how he served her and loved her. He laid down his life. Any man worth his salt is willing to die for his wife or willing to die for his kids. But that's the easy part. Before he died, he lived for her for 33 years. Made every decision he made with his bride in mind. Sacrificed for her. Surrendered to her. He didn't serve himself. He served his wife. So here's what I want you to write in. Husband's role. Love your wife by serving her. Not by leading her. By serving her. Now, is it the man's job to lead the home? Yes, we'll talk about that in a moment. But Jesus said the greatest leader among you is the servants of all. Guys, when we love our wives by serving them, the home works. The husband's role is to lay down his life, not just to die, but to live in order to serve your wife. Wife's role, you ready? Respect your husband by following him. The verse says, submit to your husband as you do to the Lord. Now, let's look at the word submit. It does not mean be a doormat. It does not mean be a slave. It does not mean jump when your husband says jump. doesn't mean that. It simply indicates that in every relationship in life, there's a leader and there's a follower. And in the spiritual realm of your home, God wants to lead through your husband. Now, he wants that husband to lead by serving, not by demanding, by giving his life up, not by demanding his rights. He wants us to serve. But wife, we are literally to follow our husband. Listen close. In every other area of marriage, the husband does not have to be in charge. I've seen people take this truth that the husband's to be the spiritual leader of his home and say, well, the husband decides everything. I mean, I know marriages where the wife has to get permission to go to the grocery store. Really? Or to spend money. Seriously? That's not the role. That's not godly. That's not what Scripture teaches. Who ought to lead the areas of your marriage is dependent on who's good at it. Who ought to handle the finances? The person that can add. (laughs) That's not hard. Who ought to manage the home? The person that can manage the home. Who ought to manage the kids and the grandkids? At my house, that better be my wife. In fact, there are more things that she manages than I manage easily. In our relationship, she's more gifted, she's sharper, she's more organized, she's more detailed. But in the spiritual area of life, God has said, Dan, you're the husband. You're supposed to lead your wife by serving her. Lead your home. Lead your home. Here's what I've discovered. When I lead my home by serving her, she has no problem following my leadership. But when I lead by demanding or asserting my rights or being it's all about me and my thinking, she digs in her heels. Wonder why. 
Mary was going to teach with me today. And uh, she's having some back issues and couldn't do that. I've got the shingles. Be glad to share them with you. <laughs> Actually, I can't give you shingles, but I can give you chicken pox. So if you want it, come up afterwards. I'll kiss you right on the lips. <laughs> we've had a week of challenge because we've both been sick. And we've both been caring for each other. And we've both been working through this. But you know what? When we serve Jesus first and then we submit to whatever it takes for the marriage to work, the roles fall into place. Now, why did God say, husband, lead your home spiritually? Be the spiritual leader. Serve your wife. Why did he say that? I really don't know. Scripture doesn't indicate clearly why that happens. I'll give you an opinion. Notice the word opinion. When I give you an opinion, I use the opinion word about 46 times so you know it's an opinion. It's an opinion, okay? Here's my opinion. I believe women, by nature, are more spiritually minded than men. They're more nurturing. They're more caring. They're more sensitive. Of course, it's not hard to be more sensitive than a brick. <laughs> They're more discerning. Generally speaking, the female gender is more spiritually minded than us men. I absolutely believe, it's just my opinion, that God knew if he didn't make us that assignment, we'd sit on our backside and let the ladies lead everything. Because you're so good at it. We're so blessed to have you in our lives. Men, serve your wife. It's about her. Honor her. Ladies, follow in the respect your husband's spiritual leadership. That relationship works. So there's three submissions. Do you have them all? First submission is to Jesus. It doesn't work unless you move from two-dimensional husband and wife to three-dimensional. The closer you get to God, the closer you get to each other. The second submission is to each other, whatever it takes to make our marriage work. And the third submission is to the role, husband, serve your wife, wife, follow your husband. Here's the last thing I want to give you, and then a couple of opportunities for us to apply it. Godliness begins at home. Your spouse knows whether or not you're the real deal. Your kids know. You can't fake them out. There's a good chance your neighbors know. They hear you. They watch you. You cannot fake spirituality at home. And if we're going to be on family mission, it starts with the legacy of building a Jesus-centered marriage. Submit to him. Submit to each other. Submit to the role. There's a lot in this to talk about this week. I encourage you. Take it home. Sit down over a meal. Talk it through. Next week, we're going to be talking about how do you raise your kids without killing them. <laughs> Raising your legacy. Two opportunities for you today before we go. Two things that I want to let you know about. The first one is we do have an opportunity for you to talk with someone today. A couple of months back, we added this idea that people sometimes want to pray with someone or they want to talk with someone or maybe you want to ask, what's my next step? and getting involved at Westside or in following Jesus. And we have next step counselors, regular people, who've been designed to pray with you. They've been prepared to talk with you about your next step. Just to listen a few minutes. They'll be down front in our services at Lenexa and Speedway. Up at Lansing, you can talk to Pastor John. Online, there's a button that says pray with somebody. Hit it. You'll have an individual chat with someone. We want you to take your next step. If you want to talk with someone today, come up after the service and make that happen. Here's the last thing. I want to brag on you, church. Have you noticed that the entire city is excited about the Chiefs? Six and O, oh, baby. I mean, I mean, they're my second favorite team, but they're taking over first place. It's amazing what has happened. The, the spirit of the city is up. The excitement is up. Six and oh. Nobody predicted that. I have that excitement and more 
about you, church, and about what you've done through All In in the last six months. We're now six months into All In. All In is our effort to give, to pray, to invite, to see a thousand new unchurched people come to know Jesus here at Westside in the next two years. And here's what I want to give you on the report. Six months in, the giving is off the hook. It's off the charts. You guys are doing it. You're killing it. The praying is happening. I had a lady come up to me two weeks ago after this service and say to me, hey, Dan, my name is on the board out there. My friend wrote my name up there. I didn't know it and began praying for me, and she invited me to come, and I found Jesus, and I got involved at Westside, and I want you to know this thing's working. My name's on that board. That rocks. That rocks, guys. So I want to brag on you. Yeah, that'll work. I want to brag on you and say, six months into this, we're 6 and 0. Oh. <laughs> we're 6 and 0, oh, guys. We're winning every month. Thank you for that. Continue to do that. Bless God for that. I want us to pray for our marriages as we wrap up today. Could I do that? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the journey that is marriage, for the 37 years I've had with the woman that I love. Lord, there's been some great years and there's been some tough ones. Most of them, Lord, have both. I pray that you teach me and all of us how to honor you in our homes, how to make home the first priority. We do want to submit to you, Jesus. We do want to submit to whatever it takes to the role you have for us to play. Teach us this week, Lord. Bless our homes as we put you in first place. Is our prayer in Christ. Amen. If you want to talk with somebody today, come down to the front. God bless church. See ya.